I see a need in our community. Oh, hey guys. Yeah, everything that you saw before right now was filmed another day. And I don't know what day that was. Everything's blending together right now. Yes, my house is a disaster. Cameron and Karen just went to Costco and Cameron did want me and Thor to come, but you know what? I don't know what year it is. And I'm about to have a grippy sock vacation. Just kidding. My son is experiencing what I think is the first sleep regression he's ever had because everybody warned me about a four month sleep regression. They warned me about a six month. They warned me about other various months throughout the first years, year and a half. And I don't think he ever had a sleep regression until now. I don't think Thor has even gone through one come to think of it yet. But yeah, it just started like two weeks ago and it's gradually becoming more and more and more and more and more frequent. And it's like every night now. <laughs> We really have to look into baby proofing because he's just opening all the doors, running into our room in the middle of the night, going downstairs in the middle of the night because he knows how to open both baby gates. Yes, he figured out the complicated one, little top part that you have to press first before you can open it. I don't know which type of door proofing I should use because I feel like the one that goes on the door handle itself I feel like he's gonna get he's gonna figure that out like I feel like he's gonna know so I, I feel like I need something that goes on top maybe something that is sort of like a, a latch or something to prevent him from coming out of his room because I mean not that I want to lock my child in his room but it's it's becoming a safety issue especially if he tries to go down the stairs in the middle of the night while we're not up. I feel like I know why this is happening because he's begun exploring his imaginary play like he he loves Moana he loves watching the movie Moana almost every day he loves to run around and sing while Moana is running around and singing um, the other day he jumped into Thora's pillow and pretended it was a boat and was like rowing so he's starting to explore more complicated imaginative play and I feel like that must mean his imagination is exploding, so I kind of feel like he might be having bad dreams or something because he is refusing naps during the day. In fact, the only way I can get him to sleep during the day is if I put him in the little baby bouncer chair that vibrates and then that sort of makes him go to sleep, but he'll sleep for a very short period of time, like, like 20 to 30 minutes, and then he wakes up and almost seems terrified and then he's really clingy and and like upset for at least an hour after he wakes up so i'm i'm wondering if maybe this is just like a, a stage of development where he's starting to get more vivid dreams or something and it's scaring him i don't know but it's every day it's it's uh you know he's he's up in the night as if night is day and then he's up in the day because day is still day it's been it's been a time, I'll tell you that. Thora's doing a lot of growing too. We've decided we're gonna start testing out some purees with her. I've been spoon feeding her some of her milk and she takes it really well by the spoon. So I think I think it's time, you know, cause she's she's been sitting up in the sit me up a little bit longer each day. And she's she's really good at just keeping her her torso and her neck completely steady. So I think she's ready, she's ready to start tasting some things. Maybe not, you know, full-on baby led weaning just yet, but I, I think she's definitely ready to start getting her feet wet.
happy Friday. I'm definitely a lot more happy because that one actually slept last night. That's kind of how it goes where it just, there's several nights in a row where he doesn't sleep and he gets up and down, up and down, up and down. And then it's like his little body can't take it anymore so he just sleeps through the night again. So I know it's like he can sleep through the night. He's just not. <laughs> But even this morning he was up and I didn't realize he was up until I heard the downstairs baby gate slam. <laughs> so we got to figure something out. If anybody knows of a baby proofing thing for bedroom doors that's like higher up that he wouldn't be able to touch, let me know. Let me know which ones are the best because we need it and we're going to be getting that this weekend. Like stat. Damien, it's too early for catnip. Like, bro, wait till 5 p.m. or something. Damien's like, no, nah, I'm on a permanent vacation. I can do this whenever I want. <laughs> this has definitely been hard because I think Kieran's been sleeping through the night since he was eight weeks old. I mean, there was here and there that he would wake up, but it wasn't like, like it is right now. <laughs> it's almost like having a, a newborn again. This really puts into perspective just how dang tired a lot of parents can be because I know that a lot of children don't sleep through the night and this like both of my kids sleep through the night and um, I haven't experienced sleep regressions until now so just the past couple of weeks have been really hard I can't like kudos to parents that have children that don't sleep through the night for years you know y'all are rock stars you must put a pick line of coffee <laughs> into your body every day. I don't know. I don't know how y'all are surviving. Godspeed. A little update about the mother that lost her baby recently in our community. She's really going through it, you know. I've been talking to her and a lot of the stuff that she's describing is exactly what I went through when we first lost Kaya. I've decided to move forward with creating a local grief group for um, bereaved parents to meet up with each other in person so they can actually meet people that understand what they're going through. Um, I created a, a Facebook page yesterday so I can sort of get the word out in the community. Eventually when we get enough people I want to get like a monthly meetup, maybe even weekly if that's possible. And there's just like massive long wait lists for therapy so I think it would be good in the meantime for grieving parents to be able to meet with people who understand what they're going through so they just feel less alone. Ever since we moved here I've been looking for a local support group for bereaved parents and I just haven't been able to find one. Even even like 12 step groups, they're they're a lot more accessible in larger cities like Los Angeles and smaller places like where we're currently at is just not I think mostly there's just no resources, no places to hold these type type of groups. So I imagine it's something I'll probably start in a public like free place like a park or something like that and then eventually establish a place that we can actually go to meet that's indoors. One of my lost mom friends in Arizona goes to one, I think she goes weekly, and she said it has been really beneficial for her with her, her grief journey. So that's something that I wanna bring to the community here because nobody should suffer alone. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking now. Um, I think we're gonna end up going to a pump, pumpkin patch this uh, this weekend, so. The weather's just been absolutely awful and it's finally starting to get cooler, so we're gonna go enjoy <laughs> probably the last weekend available for pumpkin patches. Let me know what y'all are doing this weekend. Mm -hmm.